Well, my name's Robin Wetton. I'm uh, the owner and managing director of Permajet, based in the UK. And today uh, we're talking with Rod Whelans about uh, different paper selection types. Uh, Rod is a uh, master of the FIAP. He's also a fellow of the Royal Photographic Society and a life vice president of the PAGB. So, Rod, how do you decide what paper to use uh, for a new image that you've created? Oh, it, it is incredibly difficult. There are, there are so many manufacturers out there, and every manufacturer like yourself has a huge range of paper. So it's very confusing uh, when, you, when you start off. Um, I have some favourites, which I've gained over the years yeah, by using lots of test packs and trying images all on the, you know, the same image on lots of different papers. I, I, I like photographic style images. So the papers I go for are mostly in the photographic range that have, you know, that, that kind of dark room finish. Um, and I have a couple of favourites. So you've come, from, you've come from the dark room background yourself? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the last century, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the best of, yeah, all the <laughs> right. yeah. 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 Point where you're, you're uh, selecting a, a paper, what's the first thing that comes into your mind? Do you look at the image and think the paper, or do you think about the paper that you've got in your hand and which image will go on it? Not, not so much. I've experimented a lot over the years, so I know what papers are going to suit my kind of images. Um, so I normally go for the same one. Um, my favorite is fiber-based gold silk. That's, that's, that's my go-to paper to start with. I can maybe show you a couple that, uh, yeah. that demonstrate that. Yeah. yeah um, sure. just going to hold them up here. Th this is, uh, Hold it off so you can see it and get the reflections of it. Um, yeah. this, this is a, a picture. It's, it's in Brazil. He's, uh, they, they, they use a lot of cassava flour there, and he was uh, packing it and crushing it and doing all that. That, that picture was, uh, was done on oyster uh, paper, which is a lot of people. It's very economical, and it's a paper that a lot of people go for. Um, yeah. yeah, because it's, uh, well, it's very good workaday paper, it's, and it's yeah. good value. Yeah. Uh, but I like it on fiber-based gold silk. Now, you're not going to be able to see on the screen the difference, probably. Um, but you get a much, much better image, I think, uh, when, when you shoot on... Uh, I mean, the first thing you notice is how much... Well, the weight of it, first of all. It feels much more like a, a photograph. Now, of course, that doesn't really matter if you're going to put it in a mount. The weight isn't really that important. But but it is more satisfying to, to lift it off the printer. It just feels so much better when you do that. Uh, it's got a lovely, smooth finish. Um, it, it's kind of like a semi-glazed darkroom print. I, I guess that's why I like it. Uh, the main difference though, for me is that the blacks have much more depth. Uh, you're trying, when you're producing an exhibition or a, a picture for distinction purposes, you're trying to create a three-dimensional image just on a two-dimensional bit of the paper. And you put a lot of work into the contrast in the background and the foreground and all that sort of thing. But the paper helps as well. Uh, oyster, the blacks tend to be very deep, but two-dimensional. Um, and somehow or other, with the fiber-based papers, they're deeper. Um, you feel that you can look into the shadows much more, even when there's not any detail there. It still feels like it's got depth. Um, and, and also, it renders the colors better, I think. Uh, it's got a better color gamut. Uh, the other thing I quite like about the, uh, the fiber paper um, or the, the gold silk rather is that it's got a warm tone if I hold the two up together you can see there's, there's uh, can you see perhaps you can okay, you That's can see there's quite a difference in the colour of the papers um, yeah. gold silk is warm and it suits um, I particularly photograph people and it suits people a lot it suits a lot of other things as well of course but uh, it's fairly good for my my photography yeah, so so you, you gold like silk is my go to paper <laughs> Okay. Right. Okay. So it's the it's the warmth of the tone that 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 plays a part in selecting the paper for the image. I think you have to be aware that the that the, the of the paper colours. 
Um, none of them are really white. I mean, some you make that are much whiter than others, but none of them are really white. And you have to be aware that that will have an effect on the image. Um, and I like the warmer tones uh, of the, you know, of the, of the creamier papers. Uh, it, the, the whites don't blow out in the same way. You keep detail in your highlights. Sometimes with the, with the oyster paper, for example, especially when you're looking at them in daylight, uh, quite bright tones tend to look a bit blown out. Uh, with the fibre paper, that doesn't happen nearly as much. You get a more subtle effect. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it's just smoother, just a gentle, smoother feel. And uh, it, it suits my photography. I think it suits a lot of people's photography. I think it's a, it's a wonderful paper. You've improved it recently as well. And I think uh, marginal improvement, but it is actually slightly better than it was before. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was going to ask you to, to talk to us about why you selected that paper for that image, but I think you've, you've covered all the aspects there and the reasons why. Um, do, you, do you find that with a white-based paper, it, it sort of allows uh, colours to jump out more, to, to pop, as people you know, quite often refer to it as? Yes. There are, sometimes you do want to choose papers like that. Um, this uh, I've got I've got one here. This is uh, I don't know you see that. This is this is your fiber based mono gloss. It's looking very contrasty on the screen there, of course. But uh, it's it's a very contrasty paper. Uh, fiber based gold silk is, is is also good for monochrome prints, um, especially for if you've toned them at all. I think I have a toned one here. Yeah, if if you're toning your pictures, um, gold silk is particularly good. I think. But, but sometimes you just want to get a, a much stronger, more contrasty image. And, uh, we, you know, the, the paper is much whiter. Um, and, the, and the, the paper reacts to contrast much better. It gives you much higher contrast. Uh, and I think you get, uh, you get often a much better image with that. I mean, this, this is a picture I think that really suited high contrast. Um, it's a pottery worker also in Brazil. Um, yeah. He was incredibly patient. We were there about an hour, I think. Uh, <laughs> but, he, but he was great. He kept working all the time. Yeah. Uh, so mono gloss is, is a relatively new paper. I'm put off by gloss. A lot of people are. A lot of people don't like gloss uh, paper. But this is like a heavily glazed darkroom print. Uh, and I find it really attractive. It actually works very well for color as well. It's kind of slightly reminiscent of Cibachrome, which is really quite nice. Oh, right. Okay. That's what your feeling is. Because a lot of people have been looking for many years for the replacement for Cibachrome or yeah. Ilfachrome, as it eventually became known as. Um, and finding that high gloss has been almost the holy grail in yeah. terms of printing. Um, okay. So uh, why, is, why do you think is using the right paper an important sequence of the whole process when you're going in for a qualification yeah with fiat group or, or pagb well fiat is is exhibition based so you're talking about getting pictures into exhibitions um our awards the pagb awards for photographic merit they're based on judging single images you want the image to be as good as it can possibly be um i'll be honest sometimes the 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 Choosing between papers is a tiny little improvement. Um, sometimes you can hold your your picture on perhaps on oyster and uh, and on a fiber based paper together, and and the difference is marginal. It's only slightly better, uh, you know. But people say that you do ninety five percent of the work for five percent improvement. But it's yeah. that 5% yeah. improvement that makes you just better than everyone else. It's what takes you into the, uh, to the passing category, the acceptance into the exhibition or the getting a good enough score uh, for our distinctions. Um, the PAGB awards are done on single images, so you can choose the best paper for every single print. And it won't always be the same paper. Maybe you want to put it on an art paper like Portrait White, something like that. Um, or, you know, even one of the more textured art papers. Or if you want to keep it photographic. You choose the best paper for the image. If you're entering for a distinction with the Royal, you have to be slightly careful because sometimes they want a coherent panel of work. It's judged quite differently. Um, and sometimes if you vary the paper, 
it, it spoils the coherence of the panel uh, and that might cost you. So you have to be careful there. You have to think about that at least. But for the PHB awards, it's the best. You're, you're trying to enter the best photographs you ever took done as well as you can possibly do them. So choosing the right paper is important. So what, what would you recommend to anybody who wanted to try and select the right paper for their particular types of images? How would they go about it? You know, you've got many years of experience. Where would I start if I was just getting into printing and feeling my way into these newer, more niche type paper areas? There's no other way to do it, I think, than experiment in trial and error. Um, you know, getting, you cannot have lots of boxes of paper in your house because you just, you just go mad, uh, trying to think which one you use. Most people get down to three or maybe four, you know, two that they use a lot and one for the, the really good images and then maybe an art paper that they use occasionally. Well, that would be my, my way of looking at it. Um, and the only way to find out the ones you want is to experiment. And that's where test packs are, are incredibly useful. You can get two or three sheets of lots of different paper um, in a test pack. Everybody does them. Um, and you can experiment, print the same picture on all of them or choose a couple of pictures and print on all of the papers, see the ones you like, compare them all together. Then you go for getting, you know, the bigger boxes, the A3 boxes uh, of, of that paper. Um, I mean, my standard on the shelf um, is Oyster for just knocking off family pictures and everyday stuff. Um, the gold silk, uh, which is the one I, may I mainly use. I also like Royal Gloss, fiber-based Royal Gloss. It's, it's got a kind of dark, roomy really texture to it as well. It's very slight texture, which a lot of people like, and I do sometimes. Um, I've got the gloss, uh, the mono gloss now. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's another paper I use quite a lot. And then very occasionally I, I, I'll use uh, portrait white, um, yeah. just because I want a, a slightly different finish. I can actually yeah. show you that. Um, I've got, uh, I've got a couple here. This is, this is one done on gold silk. i just hold it there, uh, which, it's, it was a very contrasty image. There's more to it than that. Because it was a very contrasty image. And when I put it on uh, onto portrait white, because it's got a slightly matte surface, so it's, uh, the contrast is much less. And it yes. seemed to me that the picture was a lot... Uh, the, the colours were... Because it was slightly flat, the colours have, uh, have more depth. And it's also yeah. a whiter paper. Sometimes suits the, uh, suits the, the, the pictures. Subject. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed. Um, why do you think printing your work is really important? Why do I think printing is important? Well, because that's photography. Um, all this stuff that uh, you see on the, on the screen and uh, projected shows, um, that's all very nice, very entertaining. There is nothing like the satisfaction of picking up a print in your hand. Um, I don't think there can be many... Uh, amateur photographers out there or even professional photographers who don't think that's the case. Um, it's just, it's just where the fun, where the joy of photography is, I think, is producing a print at the end of the day. I think we're all of that same opinion. Yeah. Once you've got it in your hand, it's real. While it's up on a screen, it's kind of, it's not turned into something real, handleable, that you can sink your teeth into. And it's fleeting. A print is forever. Um, yeah. you know, the, the image on the screen is gone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, thank you very much indeed for joining us uh, this afternoon, Rod, and briefing us on what your view and which papers you use and why you select them. Um, I'll reiterate what Rod said there about test packs. Uh, they are available. They are the, probably the only way you're going to get to see, feel, and touch different paper types for yourself, printing on them, trying them, and then working out which one suits you. It's all about trial and error. So good luck and uh, enjoy your printing. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.